Today, I bring you my status pistol gunslinger build. It may be a little less versatile than the hybrid build, but it can be just as deadly in PvP by giving you access to annoying status effects while still doing decent damage. Since you no longer have to worry about increasing absolute penetration, you can instead focus gears and stats that help you land things like stun, sleep, and curse. With the right setup, this can become very annoying for opponents. Let's now move on to the build. If you've ever tried playing Gunslinger in PvP, it may feel like it doesn't do enough damage. I remember telling my friend that it felt like I was hitting enemies with toothpicks. But if you spec it correctly, it can become pretty deadly. By combining status effects with things like Chaotic Blade and War Spirit, you can ultimately achieve a very high amount of damage increase. Before we break down status points in gear selection, it is very important to review the following table from the Traveler's Notes Handbook. We unfortunately do not have enough points to optimize everything we want, so we have to be somewhat selective about which effects to focus on. First and foremost, we are going to want to get a lot of luck to land Poison. Poison is key to increasing the damage output of Gunslinger. It combines well with Chimera Star, Lord of Death, Cross Executioner, and Ninja Card. It also natively reduces enemies' defense and applies dot damage. Second, we are going to make sure to get a good amount of strength in order to land Stun, Curse, and Darkness. Stun, in particular, is very overpowered when it lands. It completely stops the enemy from being able to act, and greatly decreases their chances of surviving against you. Next, we pick up some Dexterity for the Fear and Sleep chance and duration. It also helps increase the base attack for ranged classes such as Gunslinger. A lot of people run enough resists to be immune to fear, and also use Nightmare Card in Headwear to be immune to sleep. So I don't focus too much on Dex. I put just enough to keep people honest, in case they try to get away with not using Nightmare Card or Fear Resist. The remainder, I divide between Int and Agility. Int helps with bleed chance and duration which is useful for the Scarlet Curtain passive skill. Agility helps increase Capoeira damage as explained in my previous video, but unfortunately it's not as useful for status effects unless you plan to use the Shattering Note for immobilization instead of Starlight Sweetie for sleep. So this is ultimately how I've broken down my stat points. You want approximately a total of 300 Strength, 270 Luck, 270 Int and 300 to 350 dexterity. Put whatever you have left over into agility. We do want to try and get as high agility as possible because it increases capoeira damage. By having some good stat point rolls on more enchants, you can actually have a decent amount left over for this. You may notice that I left some stats a little under my target amount. This is because I don't yet have the perfect mora rolls with max stats on them. I left a little room to min max later on. For now, I just count on blessing from my teammate to fill in the gaps. Let's move on to equipment. Here's the TLDR snapshot of the gears I use. There is a lot of room for variation, so I'll be going into detail on the different options available. Voice of the Soulbone and Sins of the Living are the two offhand ancient gears you need for Gunslinger. In the pistol build, you will be using Voice of the Soulbone much more often. I keep the Sins of the Living on my item bar to quick swap when I need to fire rain spam during orb collection or portal defense. For cards, I prefer Ore Spirit for the high final damage bonus potential since we are running a lot of status effects. Ninja and Rebellion card are reasonable alternatives, but I feel they aren't as great because they only focus on one status effect. For example, if an enemy resists poison, it can neutralize a significant chunk of your damage with the Ninja card. Maya and Orc Hero are great for Reflect, I do use them in select matchups, but in most cases, I will prefer the Ore Spirit because it makes the Gunslinger damage much more threatening. For Armor, I use the Cursed Ancient Gear, it comes with Ignore Defense which the pistol build needs, and you can roll either Penetration or Medium Monster Damage for the random attribute. I slot this with Chimera Star most of the time for increasing both Poison Attack and damage to Poison targets. Orc Lord is nice if you want to go for Reflect, but in this build, I think it is better to fully focus status effects. 
poison, in particular, is very important for increasing damage output. You may selectively use cards like Wolf Grandma and Dokebi if you are getting countered by enemy abnormal status. For Garment, I use Leader's Pauldron for the increased skill damage. It also comes with Ignore Defense, which is nice. Zenubia card is still the best in slot for pure damage increase, but Devil Squid is a reasonable alternative. Shoes is also pretty straightforward. I choose Emperor of the Seas for the ranged physical damage increase. I swap Moonlight, Edgar, and Dark Lord based on the situation. For accessories, I use one Cursed Hand. Although worse in stats compared to the Kiss of the Gemini, it grants access to status effects like Darkness, Fear, and Silence. It combos well with Chaotic Blade and War Spirit. I use Kiss of the Gemini for my other accessory slot. For cards, Wraith Star is ideal for increasing stun chance and duration. Smokey and Osiris are secondary utility cards that I keep on spare accessories for situational use. For weapons, I think the Golden Law Enforcer is the best choice for Capoeira damage. Inferno Pistol is a reasonable alternative if you are more focused on fire rain. There are a variety of weapon card choices here. I choose Lord of Darkness since it combos well with the status effects I'll be applying. I combine this with Soth card for the straight skill damage increase and heal debuff. Freoni is a decent choice, especially if you need the extra hit points. Thankfully, high flea builds have gone out of favor since flea doesn't help much against Thanatos or magic DPS. Skeleton Worker and Bitter Bongan can be used to proc Saren MVP headwear card if needed. And Fire Lord is for fire rain heavy builds. For headwear, I main Tariador hat to ensure stun status. It is very hard to build enough resistances to block it without using Orc Hero card. But if the enemy defaults to Orc Hero, they will get slept instead without the Nightmare card. Eggshell Buoy is also useful to have on hand if you are getting weapon broken too often. For cards, I prefer Walter over Cross Executioner because it works even if you don't necessarily land poison. Saren MVP could be an interesting option, but ultimately, I didn't think it was worth giving up two weapon card slots in order to activate the effect for this build. We already get a lot of defense decrease from the poison, so having the extra ignore defense is less critical. Orc Hero and Nightmare card are situational to block enemy status effect. For face, I prefer the Pumpkin Icing. Too many people carry Fear Resist nowadays which nullifies Gaze of the Owl. And I find that the curse from Pumpkin Icing lands very often, allowing for things like Lord of Death, Chaotic Blade, and War Spirit to activate more consistently. Clamor Cane, Starlight Sweetie, and Flower Demon Valley Lily are mandatory for the rest of the headgears. Clamor Cane is our only source of proccing stun. Starlight Sweetie forces people to choose between blocking Sleep with Nightmare card or stun with Orc Hero card. And Demon Valley Lily is needed to proc poison. For the Ancient Relic, I recommend Chaotic Blade for greatly increasing the damage of this build. True Sight and HP Relic are reasonable alternatives against select matchups. For Oracle Mirror, Hologren Hammer is nice when it lands, but with Eggshell Buoy around, I tend to prefer Combustible Knife for the consistent damage increase. You can use whatever you need for the defensive side. Runes The runes I use for my status build are pretty much the same as my hybrid build. You will need a lot of high percentage and third line rolls in order to get the full potential out of your gunslinger. Mandatory ones include third line Doomsday Fire Rain for the extra 2 seconds duration, third line for tactical maneuver to charge your bullets after dashing with Fallen Angel, fire on full power for fire rain spam, and third line of potent hormone for automatic adrenaline when reaching fatal damage. You could consider swapping out fire on full power for cheating technique rune. This will allow you to guarantee more agility buff to increase capoeira damage. However, I generally prefer fire on full power because it allows me to fire rain spam at critical moments on orb pickup in defense. Finally, let's move on to where to put skill points. Fallen Angel is a must. It allows you to dash while also reloading your bullets. Next, take the path necessary to max out pistol mastery. 
I also take the minimum necessary to reach 10 points in Magical Bullet because I plan to reach Rifling Upgrade for the extra range, in case I need to use skills like Forced Dispel. Next, I max out Warning Shot for Fear Access since I don't use Gaze of the Owl in my build. It is useful against opponents who don't run Fear Resist. I dump the remainder into Bulletproof Armor before moving on to the next tier. In this section, we take the path necessary to max out Desperado which ultimately affects Capoeira damage. I also take Two-Sided Coin, Debilitating Shot, and Magazine Expansion which all help buff the pistol build. Since we have points left over, I put them into buffs like Take Cover and Bulletproof Armor which is nice to have, even though they are not necessary. Gameplay Fire Rain plus Carnage Capoeira is the standard skill combination you'll be using most of the time. The 3 second duration of Capoeira allows for the Fire Rain to come off of cooldown. You can weave in Fallen Angel to kite and reload your bullets in between. Your position matters for landing more bullets during Capoeira. You want to be directly on top of or a little in front of the enemy due to server delay. Next let's go over the Fire Rain skill. In this example, you can see the extremely long cooldown between casts when in your typical Soulbone and Starlight Sweetie gear without any buffs. Now let's add on fire on full power. You can noticeably see the faster cooldown on fire rain. You get about 5 full casts before the buff runs out. Suffragium from a priest can add additional cooldown. In this example, you see the amount of fire rains you can cast in one fire on full power increase to 8. If you further add Sins of the Living and Fate Wheel for even more cooldown, you can see the Fire Rain cast rapidly one after another. This can be pretty deadly to anyone who stands in it for too long, including tank supports. The total amount of Fire Rains you can pump out in one fire on full power in this setup increases to 11. Don't forget to keep Platinum Shield up before heading out into battle. It is an overpowered defensive skill. Watch it block the Geno's beam with relative ease. You can also use Forced Dispel to remove buff on key targets like Divine Avenger who relies on Sacrifice. Warning Shot is useful if an enemy doesn't have Fear Resist. I tend to take this skill mainly because I use Pumpkin Icing Face instead of Gaze of the Owl. Just because this happens to have been released right when I finished this guide, I am bringing back the guessing game for my viewers. How many boxes do you think it will take to roll this mount? The one who is closest without going over will get a premium pack. Put your answers in the comments below. Deadline is this next Sunday at WOC time. Well, I hope you all enjoyed the video. See you next time.